Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter, and in this video I want to take a look at the monsters that are considered the final online bosses in the Monster Hunter series. Now while World and Iceborne don't have the distinction, all past games have featured two quote-unquote final bosses, an offline story mode boss and an online boss. Excluding Frontier, this means that we have 13 awesome monsters to look at. At the end of this video, I will also share who my personal top 5 are. Spoiler warning, I do talk about the final boss in Iceborne, so if you don't want to be spoiled about that, then watch this video at a later time. Starting now, we have Fatalis, the Black Dragon, an OG final monster in the series. and it served as the online boss for all three Generation 1 games, Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter G, as well as Monster Hunter Portable. This Elder Dragon has a lot of lore behind it, but the most striking characteristic is that it's modeled after a traditional old school dragon instead of a wyvern. To increase how awesome it is, it's also one of the Forbidden Monsters, a small group of Elder Dragons that Capcom has vowed never to feature or talk about in print or marketing. That tradition is being broken for the 15th anniversary, however, and they're starting to feature Fatalis in several consumer products. Next, moving on to Generation 2, we're treated to a variant species of Fatalis in Monster Hunter Dose called Crimson Fatalis. The Red Dragon is an even more aggressive version of the monster and focused more on the volcanic maps. Its most iconic feature is its one overgrown horn on its head and how back in the day when it became enraged its skin would get rock hard and it would require mind's eye in order to penetrate it using a melee weapon. Despite getting reworked several times throughout the series, the monster still contains a ton of powerful ranged attacks focusing on fire and blast. Monster Hunter Portable 2nd introduced a Cantor. A flying wyvern nicknamed the Tyrant of Fire. This was another monster focused on volcanic areas. This massive boss would hit like bricks and would use a special map called Ingle Isle to dive in and out of the ground including moving to the other end of the arena to perform this massive breath attack. The killer feature gameplay wise was its ability to inflict the defense down status, which would make it much easier to one shot greedy and unprepared hunters. His weapons are iconic for having massive raw power but a lot of negative affinity. In the follow-up expansion game, Monster Hunter Portable 2nd G, also known as Monster Hunter Freedom Unite in the West, we saw the Tyrant of Ice, called Ukanlos, added to the game. Almost like an ice version of a Cantor, its battle took place in a special arena called the Polar Field. Instead of going underground simply to pop up in other places, Ukanlos would also act like a shark and target a player in the group and go straight after them. It's best known for its iconic shovel-like chin. Moving on to third generation, we kick things off with Monster Hunter Tri and its final boss called Alatrayan. an elder dragon named the Blazing Black Dragon that is also considered one of the forbidden monsters alongside Fatalis. A multi-element monster, it can control dragon, fire, thunder, and ice. Its battle takes place in a special area inside of a volcano called the Sacred Land. Besides being elementally unstable and swapping between different modes of attack, the most iconic part of this dragon has to be its majestic horns, which stand tall in the air, are hard to hit, and are the ultimate trophy to break and make weapons out of. The next game is Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, a major title that never came to the west. The final boss was the majestic elder dragon of water, the storm dragon named Amatsu. Amatsu. 
I actually did a full feature video on this monster and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Amatsu floats in the air and uses fins to fly, and its battle takes place in a special map called the Sacred Pinnacle that is up high in the mountains. The most iconic characteristics of this monster is how the weather around it changed depending on the state of the monster, with the final phase of the hunt taking place in a raging storm. Luckily players in the west finally got to face this elder dragon in Monster Hunter Generations. The final game of third generation was Monster Hunter 3G, or as you guys might know it, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, the series debut on the Nintendo 3DS. Here we saw a new monster added to the forbidden monster list and that's the elder dragon called Dire Morales. Nicknamed the Smelting Black Dragon, this massive beast is encountered in the Tainted Sea, and since underwater gameplay was the standout feature for the game, half the hunt takes place underwater. It eventually does go up on land, and the sheer size of this magma-based monster is a sight to behold. Its most defining feature are the magma pools around its body, in which hunters had to cooperate to swim around it and destroy them to make it weaker. On the fourth generation, which was the biggest for the series with four different games, it started with Monster Hunter 4, which actually never came to the west. And the final boss was the insanely large Elder Dragon, the Serpent King Dragon, called the Dalamadur. This monster is so massive and its spikes so strong that it literally carves out the mountains in which it resides, so the hunt takes place in a special map called the Spear Tip Crag. The Elder Dragon is so large that the battle has different phases and actions that you could do depending where in the map that you're located. It was a great spectacle of a hunt and the most iconic attack was its super beam attack which taught everybody how to do the Superman dive. In the follow-up expansion game called Monster Hunter 4G, or Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate in the West, players did not only get to take on the Dalamandur, but they were also treated to the new final boss called Gagmazios. I'll put a link to the feature video I made on this monster in the link down below, and you might recognize it as the icon I use for this channel. Continuing the tradition of a large-scale hunt with multiple facets to it, the hunt against the giant halberd dragon takes place in the battle quarters. Unlike some of the previous large-scale monsters in which you could be relatively safe in certain spots, Gogma was aggressive and introduced a new status ailment called Tard, in which sticky tar from its body would trap a hunter and then explode. Next we have Monster Hunter Cross, or in the west, Monster Hunter Generations. The final boss was a creative cuttlefish-like elder dragon called Nakarkos. Nicknamed the Corpse Dragon, it had two arms that would take on different modes modeled after different iconic monsters. The battle took place in a special map called the Wyvern's End, and during the second phase of the hunt, the monster would finally reveal its face. Outside the transforming skeleton dragon head arms, its most iconic attack was the super beam that it could charge up and do, and it also introduced a similar status like Gogma called Mucus, which would stop you from moving if you tried to evade once you were covered in the slime. And finally we have Monster Hunter Double Cross, or Generations Ultimate, and the final boss was called Atal Ka. With a distinct Egyptian theme, this monster isn't an Elder Dragon, but it's a Neopteron, which was unexpected to say the least, and I'm sure I butchered that name. 
Nicknamed the Pavilion Mantis, she takes control of a huge apparatus called the Atal Naset, which is made out of debris from ruins and controlled by her magical silk. The battle itself was more like an event, with lots of opportunities to gather treasure as you transition between fighting the Mantis and the Fortress, and it took place in a map called the Forlorn Citadel. In the final phase, she uses her magical silk to lift up Dragonators and shoot them at you. Moving on to the 5th and current generation, these final bosses act as both the story and online bosses since there's no distinction between the two. Mass Underworld introduced Xenojiva, the Dark Light Dragon, which lurked in a map called the Confluence of Fates. This dragon is huge and has a distinct phantasm theme. The first phase of the hunt had players utilizing slingers to drop rocks on it while focusing attacks on its weak points. In the second phase of the hunt, the monster gets more aggressive and even can take to the air. And finally, we have Monster Hunter World Iceborne and its new final boss called Shara Ishvalda, the old everworm or earth singing dragon. This hunt takes place on the Origin Isle. Starting out as a giant clump of rock, once the players break off enough of the rock, it breaks out and reveals its true form. Shada can manipulate the earth and create quicksands that make it hard to move around, made worse by Shada's ability to do a super focused ray attack which feels almost like an industrial rock blasting machine. In the final phase, the beast finally opens its eyes and it does appear to follow the camera and not the hunter potentially breaking the fourth wall, but also creating a memorable impression. Now, all these monsters are hard to rank, and each one of them deserve their own monster feature video, but if I had to choose, here are my top five. Number five, Amatsu. I love the unique shape, sounds, and map for this monster. It really does feel like a true elder dragon in the sense that it affects the natural environment around it. A walking natural disaster, so to say. We have so many fire and dragon based final bosses that it was refreshing to see water represented and the attacks and structure of the hunt is unlike any other monster in the series. Number 4, Atal Ka. This was such a unique hunt that it was hard to choose between this and the next one on my list. The series always depends on these huge dragons to take the honor, but this time we had this little tiny psychotic mantis and when it lifts up the machine out of the ground I remember screaming out loud it was so thrilling. I wish her armor and weapons weren't so good though, as they kind of overshadow the rest of the gear in the game. Number 3, Alatreon. I love the idea of an elementally unstable dragon with different phases and attacks that you have to watch out for, but more than anything I just love the majestic horns it has, and you can see the horns used in all the weapon designs that you can make from it, so while breaking them was really hard to do, it was so worth it. Number 2, second place goes to Dalamadur. There's been a few event-like hunts such as Jen Moran or Lao Shan Long, but in most cases they were kind of tedious and the monsters themselves, while cool, weren't really super unique feeling. Dalamadur is this giant snake over 44,000 meters long. You can climb on its back, break its spikes, and the fact that everybody in the hunt can split up roles and takes different places, I thought was super cool. I also adored the lineup of its weapons as well. And finally, number one, I already spoiled this in my feature video, but my favorite is Gogmazios. It has the full suite, unique design, great theme song, iconic map, new status, great weapons, and a gothic theme that I just personally love. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this trip down memory lane to look at some of the final online boss monsters in the series, or perhaps you're new to World and Iceborne, so maybe you didn't know that these monsters existed, and who knows? Maybe they'll come to Iceborne. Let me know down in comments who your favorites are. Is there one in particular that you'd want me to do a monster feature video on? Any memories of these monsters that you want to share? Let me know down below. Please note that I started with Monster Hunter 3G, so I didn't get to experience the original bosses in their respective games. So I'm sure they would have ranked higher in my top 5 if I would have experienced them and had that memory. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, happy hunting.